Hi everyone, I'm Jason Speckland, a cloud solution architect at Microsoft, and this is today's Azure Dev Tip. In today's tip, I've written an Azure function in JavaScript, and I want to access a secret that's stored in my Azure Key Vault. But I've got a bit of a chicken and egg problem. You see, in order to access my Key Vault, I need a secret, but all my secrets are in Key Vault. Now, I could put it into my code, but then I run the risk of exposing that code if I do something wrong. So let's see what I can do about that, both when I'm developing locally and once I've deployed my function to Azure. Once my app is deployed, Azure actually has an easy answer for that. It's called Managed Identity. See, what Managed Identity does is it grants access from one Azure service or virtual machine to another Azure service without having to worry about a password. So uh, let me create that for my Azure function. So here's my function. I'm going to go to Platform Features, Identity, and I'm going to turn it on and save. And yes, that's what I want to happen. Now what's going on behind the scenes is Azure is creating a service principle for this Azure function to authenticate to whatever service it needs to talk to, in this case, my Key Vault. Now all I need to do is grant it access to my Key Vault. So let me do that. I'm going to copy off this uh, object ID because I'm going to need it in a sec. And here's my Key Vault. Here's my access policies, and let me add an access policy. Now, I don't need to grant a whole bunch of access. This is just the access my app needs. So let me just say I want to get and list secrets. I don't need to delete or anything. And now I need to select the service principle, and I'm just going to paste that ID I just copied in there. And there we go. Now, you don't need to search by ID. You can certainly search by name. But if you have a lot of service principles, it's usually more precise. All right, selecting that and adding and saving. And there we go. We are done. So now the Azure function can access the secret in Key Vault, and we're good to go, right? Well, not quite. That works in Azure, but we still need to worry about what we're going to do when we're developing locally outside of Azure. But fortunately, the Azure Identity JavaScript library has us covered there. So here's the code for my JavaScript function. And all of this is pretty standard for getting a secret out of Key Vault. But the part that I wanted to point out is uh, this bit right over here, this default Azure credential. Well, what, what does that mean, a default Azure credential? Well, let's take a look at the documentation. All right, so it will try the following credential types in order. So it'll try managed identity credential second, sounds good. And first it'll try environment credential. So let's take a look at that environment credential. And this environment credential is going to look in your environment variables, and if it has enough stuff defined to authenticate to Azure AD, it's going to authenticate that way. So that sounds like exactly what we need. All right, so what we need is the Azure Client ID, Azure Client Secret, and Tenant ID. And if it doesn't find those, then it'll fall back to Managed Identity. Cool. Now, what we need to do is actually create that service principle to do in real life what Managed Identity did for us behind the scenes. So. Uh, let me go to my Active Directory right here, and I'm going to create a new app registration, new registration, and I'm going to call it uh, JavaScript Azure Functions Key Vault. And all the rest of the things are fine as the defaults. So we don't need to change anything there. Let me just register that. Okay. So it is registered. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to manage that secret. All right, that secret that's behind the scenes, I need to manage it myself. So let me set that, go to my secrets, uh, create a new client secret, just add that. And there we go, there's my new client secret. Now, let me be absolutely sure that I copy it right now and I save it off somewhere, because once I leave this screen, never again will I see that secret. So you better make sure that you save it. All right, so let me come back up here. And while I'm here, I'm going to save off this client ID and this tenant ID, because I know that I'm going to need both of those things uh, very shortly. OK, now uh, that my service principle has been created, the next thing I need to do is, like I did before, grant access to the service principle in Key Vault. 
So let me take care of that. All right, there's my key vault, access policies. I'm gonna add an access policy. Just as before, I don't need a very elaborate access, just get and list secrets. And for my service principle, I'm going to copy and paste that object ID that I just created. And let me do that. And there we go. Select and add and save. Cool. Now we are done, both for local development and managed identity. The only thing to take care of now is to put these values into my code. Ugh. Well, we're back to square one. But do not despair. There are still tools that we can use to keep our credentials safe. Let's take a brief detour to see what happens when we create a brand new Azure Functions project. So let me make a directory for that. And I'm going to create a new Azure Functions project with func init. And I'm going to use the dash dash source control option to make sure that it creates a default Git repository for me. And I'm doing this in Node and JavaScript. And there we go. Those are our out of the box files. So let's take a look in Visual Studio Code and see what it's created for us. All right. So the first thing that it created for us that I want to point out is this git ignore file. And we'll notice that in this dot git ignore, it is set to ignore local.settings.json. So what this is telling you is that local.settings.json is not meant to be checked into your repository. This is where your secret lives. Don't do it. OK, so let's take a look at that local.settings.json and see what's in there. And here we have a bunch of settings just floating around in plain text. And again, as long as it's in .gitignore, it should be OK. But there's a little more that we can do to help us out in case we make mistakes. And trust me, I make mistakes. All right, let's see what we can do. So if I just do func, not fun, func, settings encrypt, then all of a sudden, all of my settings are all encrypted, which is great. And more importantly, they are encrypted using my local machine key. That means that if this does get out in the wild, no one else can decrypt it except for my local machine. So that sounds great. All right, so let's see if we can apply this to the Azure function that we created for accessing our secret. All right, so let's open up our actual function app. And we can see here that we don't have a local.settings.json. We have this sample file, but I created that for the sake of this demo. Now, that makes sense. If it's not in our Git repository, we're not going to see it when we pull it from, you know, GitHub or Azure DevOps or wherever it's stored. So we can create that file by just creating the settings on our own. So let's create the settings we need. Uh, we're going to need that Azure tenant ID. So func settings add Azure tenant ID. And let me copy and paste that tenant ID from where I got it before. All right. So. When I did that, it created my local.settings.json, and by default, it created that encrypted value. So that's that's perfect. That's just what I need. All right, I'm going to need my uh, client ID. So func settings add Azure client ID. And there we go. Func settings add Azure client secret. and paste, and there we go. Now I'm going to add one more value, and that's not specific to this authentication. That's just in the code. It's going to be looking for the key vault name. So uh, let me get my key vault name while I'm here. Just copy and paste. That is all I need. Func settings add key vault name. And there we go. All of our values are now safe and secure inside of this encrypted file. So let's run this and see if it works. Funk start. 
All right, there goes the Azure Functions runtime. And there we go. Now we have a URL for our function. So let me copy that. And I will paste that here into Postman, although it looks like it's already there. And hit send. And there we go. My deep, dark secret. I actually enjoyed the movie Cats. What can I say? I dig weird stuff. It was really weird. All right. So this is well and good, but let's see if it works once we've deployed it to Azure. OK, so I've already deployed this Azure function to Azure. And let's take a look at it now. Here we go. There we go. And this is going to load up with the functions that I have deployed. Now, remember, that local.settings.json isn't checked into Git. And therefore, when my CICD process runs, it's not going to pick up those values. So the only way it can authenticate is using the managed identity. So let's see if that works. Let me select the key vault test. And as soon as this loads, let me get the URL of that function. Now, this URL is not just going to include the URL, but it's also going to include a function key that I'm using to authenticate to Azure Functions. Now, I could actually set it up so that it doesn't require this key and authenticates a different way, like an Azure Active Directory. But that, as they say, is another show. All right, here I have my function URL. Let me copy that, take it to Postman, paste it in here. It'll probably take a second or two to spin up, and there we go. My deep, dark secret. I actually enjoyed the movie Cats in production, as well as locally developed. OK, so what, you might ask? I mean, what's the point of using managed identity if you have to maintain the client secret and client ID for local development anyway? Well, imagine that I give my developers access to the dev environment using the client ID and client secret, but my QA environment and my production environments are all locked down tight with managed identity. So my devs don't have access to it, and I don't have to go about the messy business of maintaining my QA and production secrets throughout my production pipeline. I hope you've enjoyed today's Azure Dev Tip. Thank you so much, and happy coding.